All right, so we are here, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom review. Let's get right to the video. I'm excited, man. Today is the launch. Well, tomorrow technically is the launch, but you know, it's out today. Rule, a quick note about spoilers. This review won't spoil the story of Tears of the Kingdom, but just like Breath of the Wild before it, there's a real magic in discovering it. Yeah, they're just showing, they're just showing us a few things, a little recap. Ooh, I just hit my mic. Sorry about that, y'all. Sorry. As much as possible. But there are some Let me turn it up for y'all. Of tears that are introduced early on that I will be talking about because of how fundamental they are to what makes it so impressive. Yes, sir. You've been warned in case you want to go in totally fresh. Now, on with the review. Yes, sir. What do you want from a sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? Or uh, anything? better dungeons? Totally unexpected new ideas? Yeah. Or simply more Hyrule to explore enough? Thankfully, you don't have to pick just one, because Nintendo's response to all of those answers is a casual but confident, sure thing. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom doesn't necessarily Boy, look at this. recognize what already made Breath of the Wild one of the greatest games of all time, but it's not a sequel that's simply more of the same either. This sandbox I love the whole, like, building stuff. I love that, bro. Even more ambitious. With creative new systems, I love this, bro. You can build new stuff. Oh my god! And a revamped map with a dizzying amount of depth, further fleshing out the intoxicating exploration that made the original so captivating. Breath of the Wild felt far from unfinished, but inconceivable. For real? Tears of the Kingdom has somehow made it feel like a first draft. Oh man, bro! This thing looks so clean. Bro, we got all types of Legend of Zelda content coming tomorrow. The structure of tears is a very familiar one. You start in a masterfully crafted introductory area. Where no shirt. And get a set of power this man just woke up. Literally. You dive into the open world with a main quest marker that quickly splits into four. And from there, you're free to do whatever the heck you want. Oh my god. <laughs> big story moments are once again collected at specific spots around the map. Shedding light on the history of Hyrule and the source of the upheaval. A bombastic event at the start of tears that opens up menacing chasms. Brother. Ruins to appear floating in the sky. And Graphically, this game looks perfect, bro. Anomalies. Rise. Rise, my servants. This still isn't necessarily the best storytelling format, as it leaves you without much direct interaction with its central characters for most of your time playing. But that's very easy to forgive when the story of tears is so I'm bad you cool. drink. Sure, it's about stopping another evil jerk and saving uh -oh. Zelda again. Link, you must find me. But the places that Link. familiar shell goes are buck wild in the best possible way. It's not God of War or anything, but its yeah. story can be a legitimate high point instead of simply entertaining background flavor. Yes, it can, bro. Line of defense will be Link. Hey, that man Link is carrying the game, literally, bro. The wild, and it's still an absolute. Well, he's carried every Zelda, so. Especially when the impressive new building system lets you do so in more imaginative ways. Even ignoring that for a moment, though, one of the most important lessons that very few of the games inspired by Zelda since 2017 seem to learn is that a blank map is more powerful than a full one. You have to mark down points of interest you see or hear about in the world yourself, and filling it to the brim with your own goals is so much more natural and rewarding than being handed a checklist of waypoints. Oh, right uh, okay, so it's, it's kind of like, um... It's kind of like GTA. Whenever like you drive through like the, the drive through like the map, and like the map is like not full yet, and you're just driving through it to like discover new places. Okay. Recognize characters or locations and see how they've grown and changed in the years since the defeat of Calamity Ganon. But Tears also sends you along unexpected paths or to less familiar locations, breathing plenty of life into a map. I love how open Zelda is. If that makes sense. And if that's not enough for you, whole areas have been significantly altered by the upheaval. What were once pools of lava might now be large open spaces. Meanwhile, the beach town of Laurelin has been attacked by pirates. Uh oh. With its rescue and its rebuilding in your hands. There are tons okay. of like this along the main quest line and off the beaten path alike. And if that's not enough for you, I also loved stumbling upon and exploring dozens and dozens of caves, wells, and sky islands. Bro, I love whenever he just free falls. I love that, bro. I love that so much, bro. 
Using one of the new Skyview Towers to launch yourself into the air lets you easily mark shrines on the ground before gliding to a nearby floating archipelago filled with its own challenges. Brother. And if that's still not enough for you, then boy, oh boy, did I save the biggest for last. Maybe you still think Nintendo played it safe by reusing the same map. But diving down a chasm and into the depths below will melt any doubts into pure, joyous amazement. Boy, what's the Waiting underneath is a dangerous, pitch-black map that is literally the size of Hyrule itself. I cannot overstate this. Wait, what? It is massive. I have played over 100 hours of tears, and I have explored maybe half of it. This new map is not entirely like the surface in that it doesn't have much in the way of side quests. So this is a whole new part? But it is full of treasures to seek out and plenty of awesome surprises worth discovering for yourself. How are you going to get back up? This substance is called gloom, and whenever you take damage from it, it lowers your maximum health. That oh, forces you to either what? return to the light or eat a gloom removing meal. To oh, wow. Them, which adds a very fun pressure to every fight down here. You also have to throw out bright bloom seeds to see where you're going. Yeah, it's just to brighten it up. Which gives exploration a totally different and much more wow. tasty. Wow. There are no shrines in the depths. There are dozens of light fruits. They added a whole new DLC <laughs> down here. That's yet another completionist goal that's equal parts compelling and extensive. Taken together, Brother. the the Sky Islands act as brilliant complements to the more traditional surface activities. So I can't lie, I'd rather stay up here, bro. Intimately familiar with into beautiful <laughs> settings and wild situations. I'd rather, rather stay up here. Here. That boy threw a boulder at me? There are now uncountable opportunities to get endlessly distracted until you're wildly far away from wherever you only thought you were going. <laughs> hey, man, this man, that man, that modern-day Drake. And it wasn't long after I went to get it for him that I was in the literal underworld being... <laughs> oh, my... Whoa! I just wanted some honey. <laughs> who's, who's this Rubik's Cube? I beat Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, I mean, Link's got boxed in. I said Link's. Ooh, Link. Even with more than 20 after that, I still have dozens of light routes to find, plenty of shrines left to complete, a huge list of side quests, and so much more. It's hard to overstate how big this game feels, even in the context. I didn't even know they had that that that, that part. The exact same thing. Divine uh, intervention. So much of Tears feels like a response to the handful of complaints people had with Breath of the Wild. Hmm. For example, the Divine Beasts got a lot of flack for bucking usual Zelda dungeon trends. What's replaced them doesn't scratch the itch of collecting a compass, map, and key item like in older Zelda games, but they are at least a lot more thematically interesting and varied. The Ooh. more unique and often super entertaining boss fights both oh! can occasionally stand with the greats of the series, too. I don't want to show too much, but a standout for me was a gooped up monster that felt like a Splatoon villain had somehow infiltrated Hyrule. Oh my god, it looked like the Fortnite shark. Variety as a whole has been vastly <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar body built. What? Extremely satisfying combat as a result. <laughs> that boy built like Kevin Durant. Hey! I love how like you can like form different weapons and stuff like that in this game. Like likes will try to devour. What is that? And little frogs will scurry out to eat your bright blue. What? Much wider My blues. There's also the absolutely absurd new weapon fusion system, which lets you attach. Yeah, I, I love the weapon. Oh my god. Any other weapon oh my god. Even arrowhead. Monster horns now act as powerful blades or bludgeons to buff your base weapons, but you can also do extremely dumb stuff, like put a flamethrower on a boomerang. <laughs> okay, now that's fire stuff. though. That's fire though. I don't know. Why not? It's a system that just says yes to whatever you throw at it, and then trusts you to figure out what's good, bad, or incredible. He's on fire. And because of this, up in here, he's really not. He's on fire. Suddenly having a bag full of monster parts is the equivalent of having dozens of backup weapons just waiting for Bro. a to be attached to. Hey! Any weapon can be a fire sword if you've got the horn of a fire dragon to slap onto it. <laughs> That's nice though. That looks so nice. To combat with throwing items, letting you quickly toss out things like the excellent new muddle bud, which makes enemies attack each other. Okay, that's pretty fire. Oh my god. There are also bomb flowers you have to collect. Bomb flowers. More valuable and powerful now that they aren't infinite. 
These items can be attached to arrows, too, and shields can even become a sort of offhand weapon with fusion. It's a Ooh, free frame! You get the hang of it, letting you try out cool strategies that just weren't possible in Breath of the Wild. He's on fire! Up in here, it's hurting hot, he's on fire! The complimentary ability to weapon fusion. Oh my god, the building thing. Oh my god, one of my favorite features. Almost what am I, I, I fell in love with it as soon as I saw the first trailer of them doing this. Special devices like gliders and fans you can pull out of your inventory at any time, giving you an immense amount of freedom during exploration. That is crazy. I love I love that, bro. The whole building thing. Oh man. It's hard to find the limit of. Yeah, flip that thing over. Car I'd made only to reach a dead end. <laughs> Instead of abandoning my creation, I channeled my inner Doc Brown and turned it into a That is amazing, bro. Right over a canyon. That is amazing, this bro. Might sound silly, but that simple act was honestly one of the most rewarding gaming moments I've had in a long time. I'm not sure I was supposed to do that, but it worked. Sort of felt like the unofficial tagline of Breath of the Wild, and Tears leans even harder into that creativity. Most shrines use building in neat. But I'm guessing that little battery that, that I'm guessing that you gotta like refill it or something like that, because like it's going down really fast. I can't lie. Building either. Look at this, bro. People who aren't as interested in this side of things, while simultaneously. No, I'm interested in this. I like this. Pretend this is Kerbal Space Program. Getting from point A to point B can become an engaging puzzle. Honestly, that could be a little Rocket League car. A traveling band's carriage fly to get them up a mountain, or helping a Korok get to its far-off friend. That's fire. <laughs> That's fire. Oh, never mind. Cleverness is a hysterical pair of Looney Tunes lunacy, letting you strap literal rockets to anything and everything, and then watch like Wiley Coyote as your plans disastrously blow up in your face or simply drive off out of your control. Sometimes failure is just as fun as success. I mean, hey, you need failure to succeed, though. Can't can't lie. Whoa, whoa, whoa where's he going? Whoa, 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 stop it. Uh, performance anxiety. Performance anxiety. Sorry, I, I can't read. I all day praising a million and a half other little quality of life improvements, like the brand new recipe system. But one place Tears hasn't necessarily improved over Breath of the Wild yeah. is performance. This can be a beautiful game as you soar through the air. I'm guessing that a lot of people didn't have a problem with the performance, right? That the last game suffered from during busy moments. I never mind. They can certainly oh. distract, but it's also not any worse. So okay. The only harm they ever truly caused is the emotional damage of making me once again pine for a switch. Okay. Though, as we've all been doing for the past several years. Okay. Really quite I get what he's saying, though. I saw essentially no bugs whatsoever, positioning tears far away from a mess like last year's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Honestly, the fact that you can jump from the very top of the sky and dive all the way to the surface, straight through a chasm, and down to the floor of the depth. That's sick, though. All the way from the top and then down to the forest. Of, oh, that's that's sick. Miracle. That's sick. Verdict. Okay. What's, what's the final verdict on this? The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is an unfathomable follow-up to one of the greatest games ever. Somehow improving upon it in nearly every way. Brother, I want to get my hands on this, bro. Life improvements, a genuinely exciting story, or wildly creative new building mechanics. I want to get my hands on this, bro. Oh, man. It both revamps old ground and... <laughs> is so immense, it somehow made me wonder if Breath of the Wild was actually all that big. No, I know. Breath of the Wild, it was big. It was that big. It was. To discover and delightful distractions to keep you from ever reaching that it was. This is just a really, really, really nice sequel. I can just tell off the bat. I haven't even played it yet. Nintendo has followed up a triumph with a triumph. Expanding yeah. Expanding and evolving a world that already felt full beyond expectation. Yeah. And raising the bar even higher into the clouds. 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Bro, I'm... Listen. You can read my full written review on IGN.com for even more about listen, what makes this game... Listen. Shout out to IGN. Brother, listen. I haven't even touched the game, but I've seen, like, little clips, right? I try not to see, like, you know, uh, like, full videos because I wanted to, like, you know, react to them with you guys. Or I wanted to watch them with you guys. Brother. Haven't even... First of all, what he said about Breath of the Wild, you know, being, you know... Um, I mean, obviously, he was still, you know, giving the, giving the game praise and stuff like that. But brother, Breath of the Wild, statistically, bro, one of the, one of the best games ever. Okay, 
everybody in in their everybody in their beautiful mama got that game, bro. Let's be real, okay? Let's be real. Everybody, everybody got Breath of the Wild, okay? Um, haven't even touched this game yet. I've saw a, a few clips, brother, brother. I haven't seen one bug, no glitches, no nothing, brother. This might be. And you listen. We all know. Uh, Games are games, right? Games, some games, first day, they mess up. Even though they're still good, they mess up. That's just a video game. That happens. But, brother, I haven't seen one clip where there was a glitch, there was anything. I know somebody's probably going to send it to me, whatever. But I haven't seen one clip of Tears of the Kingdom. No glitches, no bugs, no, no bro, bro, brother, I searched up, right, to find this video. I searched up uh, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I didn't see, I, I usually see, whenever I search up a new game, I usually see one bad review in the title. Oh, this game was horrible, this game, blah, blah, blah. No, bro, no, bro. All I saw was this game's a masterpiece, uh, this game is amazing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, bro, I saw nothing but greatness for Zelda. Right, and obviously it's Zelda, like it's the Legend of Zelda. So, like, you know, I expected it, but at the end of the day, brother, this is probably what one of the first times this year and last year that I've seen a game. Right, as soon as I showed it up on YouTube, first day, like nobody, nobody said there was no bad review about this game, none. So that shows you something. And obviously, again, it's Legend of Zelda. What do you expect? Like, <laughs> what do you honestly? What do you? It's. It's Zelda, and again, not everybody's into Zelda, but a lot of people's into Zelda. A lot of people was into Zelda, so that's why it's so popular. That's why it's so. It has one of those fan bases to like. Uh, it has like one of those fan bases. It has a very strong fan bases. Okay, so it's kind of like uh, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy has a very strong, uh, strong, uh, strong fan base. I try to say like three different words at the same time. I usually do that if I stutter, whatever. Just ignore. It. I just like to keep everything, you know, natural. Um, other than that, yeah. So like Final Fantasy, a really uh, big, you know, strong fan uh, fan base. Uh, Genshin Impact, big strong fan base. Uh, you know, other games like that, bro, that have a really diehard uh, fan base. Yeah, like though, like they not let nothing up. Straight ten out of ten positive views. And um, honestly, I'll be real, you know, back when I wasn't, you know, really into Zelda like that, obviously I never hated the game, but I would think, okay, why do people, why do, you know, why is this game so high up? Like, why is this game so like, like this, like, there's no way, there's no way this game is so perfect. There's no way there's nothing wrong with the game. And then you play it or you look into it, whatever, and you finally give into it. And there's literally nothing wrong with the game. It's literally perfect. Uh, so off the bat, haven't even played Tears of the Kingdom yet off the bat looks absolutely amazing i didn't even know about the, the the forest of the whatever how you have to drop you you drop down to this one part and you just fall in and you get to this whole new place where it's all dark and you have to brother i didn't even know that didn't even know that that is crazy bro that is oh my god i didn't even know that bro so yeah haven't played it yet comment down comment down below if you guys played it uh yeah tell me how it is again it looks absolutely amazing ign gave it a t gave it a 10 out of 10 um for right now it's a 10 out of 10 in my book man haven't seen one bad review bad review about it i have no negative uh thoughts about it right now i think it looks really good they added some new stuff in um like he said like the guy said in this video um uh, obviously it, it kind of does play like you know uh breath of the uh you know like the last game breath of the wild but like i mean obviously it's, it's a sequel so like it, it's it's gonna play like the same game so um, other than that, whew, man, I cannot wait to uh, react to more gameplay about this, man. I got you guys covered tomorrow with more gameplay. I want everybody to, you know, play the game first, see how it feels. I didn't want to, you know, just overshadow you guys with, you know, Zelda uh, gameplay, you know. But I wanted to upload a Zelda video for you guys, though. So other than that, comment down below what you guys think of Zelda. If you guys got it, uh, if you guys don't got it, uh, go get it. And, um, yeah, I'll see you later. For the next one, I'm out. And 